Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, welcoming number one New York Times bestseller James Dashner to Behind the Velvet Rope. He's got a new book called The Fever Code. It's the prequel to The Maze Run, and we're chatting all about it. Get ready for a great day behind the velvet rope. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade, one of America's best-selling authors, James Dasher, is joining me in the studio. Great new book, James, The Fever Code. Congratulations, man. Thanks. So, you making enough movies off these things? What's <laughs> going on? Congratulations. Thanks, man. This is a prequel. Yes, it is. It is a prequel. In fact, there have been, this is the second prequel. So, this is the fifth book in the series. So, we keep joking, it's the fifth book in my trilogy. We uh, just can't stop writing books. But no, this is the last one. It's kind of weird to end a series with a prequel, but uh, my fans, my readers, I think they'll really feel the closure of it because it explains a lot of things, puts a lot of pieces together, and uh, it's, I'm very proud of it. So this is the official lead up to the Maze Runner then? Yep, this book literally ends where Maze Runner begins. All right, so you've had this incredible fan response. Obviously, you've had these movies now made, uh, movies, these books now made into movies. Mm -hmm. Has it blown your mind when you start doing this? Do you have any comprehension that you're going to have your writing actually put on the big screen? You know, it'd be extremely pretentious to just expect that, but... I would have been like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But of course, it was my biggest dream because I'm a huge movie buff. I just, I mean, movies are my life. And, I mean, to be on the set and be involved with any movie would have blown my mind. But then you add this layer of, it's based on my book that I wrote. It's just almost too much. It was just the, the, definitely the highlight of my career. How does it start? Like, how do you decide, hey, I'm going to do YA stuff? Like, how does it kick in where this is the genre I want to tackle? Where does it all begin for you? For me, it started the first few books I wrote were actually for a really young audience, kind of the older elementary school kids, just because I grew up, you know, loving Charlotte's Web and James and the Giant Peach and Super Fudge and all these types of books. And that was the magic I remembered of reading. So I started with that and then my Stephen King side kept trying <laughs> to seep through. So I'm like, I need to go, I need to be a little darker, a little scarier. And that just upped the audience. And I liked having teenagers with a lot more depth to their character. And so that's where I ended up. Obviously, with your series, uh, The Hunger Games, we saw uh, Divergent. We are seeing this monopoly right now of these <laughs> franchises. Has it blown your mind to see how much fans have taken to these different franchises, including yours? Oh, yeah. The fandoms are definitely my favorite part. I mean, uh, I hear every day about people from all over the world who connected through my books and became friends. Just a few days ago, this uh, lady from Germany flew to America to finally meet in person this, this other lady she'd become good friends with. And uh, they just, they support each other, they boo each other up. It's kind of this community. And I imagine the other fandoms are like that too. It's just, I had no idea that that sort of thing happened but it's definitely been a pleasant surprise. Okay, now I want to know, what's been the <laughs> coolest experience, like the mind-blowing experience? Um, I went to Argentina, okay? And I grew up in a very humble home in Georgia. I mean, the farthest we ever went my entire childhood was Florida, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so this was my first big international trip for books or anything. We went to Argentina and it was this book festival and they were hoping for a few hundred people and 10,000 people showed up. Wow. And I just, I still can't wrap my head around it. Like these people in this land just, that I'd never even dreamed of as a kid read my books and like my books and would come to my event, much less 10,000 of them. Uh, that's still probably the most mind-blowing event and it was an insane day, I can tell you that. 
When did it start to catch fire? You write the books, they're published, they come out, but when does it start to catch fire and the fans begin to attach to this thing? I was really proud of how Mage Runner developed because we started slow. The first book came out, it didn't even hit the New York Times or anything. And then just with every book, it, it grew and grew, which made me feel like you know, it was word of mouth and people enjoying it. So the second book hit the New York Times, and then when the third book came out, it stayed on the New York Times for quite a while and kept growing. And then, of course, the movies happened, which, you know, you can't replicate what a movie does for a book. It's like a multi-million dollar advertisement. Yep. So that really made it explode. Um, you know, we're in almost 50 languages now. It's just, it's just unreal. How does it change your life, personally, to have a hit series like this attached to you? Well, you know, there's obviously the financial stability, knowing that you can do this the rest of your life. You're not just traveling to Florida anymore, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I figured out recently that I've been to every state but three, which blows my mind. That's impressive. But, uh, and just, you know, my kids, my kids love, you know, they got, a couple of them got to go to the movie premiere. And, you know, they're all basically teenagers now. So they're extremely active on social media. And for them to see their nerdy dad have all this success and interaction with all these people all over the world, they get a real kick out of it. So it's just fun for our family. But uh, my wife does a good job of keeping us all grounded. I'm always curious. Like, you have these books being made into movies, and obviously the producers get involved, the studios get involved. How much influence and interaction does the actual author have behind the scenes? You get to choose Dylan O'Brien as a cast member. Like, wh what do you get to do behind the scenes? I had, I was just enough to be happy. I didn't have any true power, but Fox just treated me so awesome. And it's not like I chose Dylan O'Brien, but they told me about him and, and they'd always ask me my opinion. I'm not sure it really mattered that much. <laughs> <laughs> but I read the scripts and gave feedback and go to the set and it's just, it's been very positive for me, but also I understand that they're the movie experts and so I don't really have any true decision power. Was but there ever concern though? I, I would, like this has got to be like a baby to you. Like yeah. these each have to be a child to you. Totally. Do you ever worry, all right, these people are transforming it into a movie, they better get this thing right? Yes. I mean, some people even say, you know, would you, you know, are you sure you wanted to do this? <clears throat> I mean, I would have, there was never a doubt that I would let someone at least try and see what happens. But I was definitely worried about it because I've had friends who've had books made to movies that were just awful <laughs> and bombed and it's like <laughs> embarrassing. Um, and they'd be the first ones to say that. But we just got lucky. They, they found this brand new guy. It was his first feature film. Wes Ball was the director. Yep. They had this great cast. Getting Dylan was just such a steal, I think. And Will Poulter and Kaya Scott Alario, who's in the new Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, it's been fun to watch because since we got them all and got them all committed to the movies, their careers have now They've all blown up. <laughs> That's what happens, man. You get into the, one of these franchises and it's like, just blows you up. Did you see The Revenant? Of course. And Will, Will Poulter was like the, kind of the scrappy, you, scrappy kid. Yep, who, yep. It's just so fun to watch a guy from my movie in this movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and have such a big part. Tom Hardy. I mean, yeah, that's it was, stuff like that is really fun for me because we felt like a family on set and they all, all the actors stay in touch and it's just been a really positive experience. When you look at each and every book, is there one for you that's a favorite? Like, do you, do you say, this was my masterpiece? You know, I've always, at least the last few years, I've answered, it's, it's a book called The Eye of Minds, which actually came out after the Maze Runner book before this. It was very important to me to keep writing and not just throw my life into Maze Runner forever. So I, I've written a trilogy of books since Maze Runner. And uh, it's, I always say it's kind of like Inception meets The Matrix a little bit. But it's my most crafted, plotted out, really thought through book. And I'm, that's probably my favorite. Tom and Teresa, this is them creating the maze, correct? Yes. 
Yes, it's it's much more complex than that. Um, <laughs> that that's the book right there, guys. Just go <laughs> go get it. Well, Tom no, and, Teresa and that's not a rip on you because it says it on the cover. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure I'm ripping off you. Trust me. <laughs> but it's it's just the reason I'm so proud of it is because a prequel. You think, oh well, we we basically know how it ends. We know the basic storyline. How surprising can it be? But that's what we really worked hard to make it full of surprises and full of little things that actually change your perspective on the original books. So, um, and it doesn't end quite like you think it does and that, you know, most people will expect a certain ending. And of course it has to end in some ways in a certain way, but there's this little twist. Um, we're just, it's really fun to hear from people who've read it by now and, and hear their response. I was thinking about you because there is a show that I love. It's called Power. It's on stars. It has nothing to do with you, but there, I, <laughs> I've interviewed the creator a million times. Her name is Courtney Cabagbo. And one time, I'll never forget, she told me about how when she pitched a series, she essentially had the first five seasons drawn out. Mm. And you, she said, when you go into a pitch, you have to say, here's the arc of the story, five seasons out. Wow. The reason I relate this to you, mm -hmm. when you're writing these books, do you have already the whole series plotted out in your head, or is it you're writing book by book and kind of going each step of the way? It depends. On Maze Runner, it was more of a general vision uh, when I was writing the first book. But once I sold that to Random House, they really wanted to start digging into where it was going. So I spent a lot of time uh, doing more background for the first book, mapping out the others. Uh, but way more than ever before, that series I was just telling you about, The Eye of Minds, yep. that one I actually outlined all three books and really laid the whole story out and where the twist would be uh, before I even started writing the first book. That's mind-boggling to me, by the way. Yeah. Like, I can barely <laughs> figure out what I want to eat for breakfast. <laughs> and here you are outlining a whole world of characters and everything else. For me, that's the, that's the fun part. Um, you know, I, I'm all about the ideas and just, you know, just think, oh, that would be cool, that would be cool, that would be cool. And uh, the actual writing is the thing that I've really had to struggle with and, and study my craft and, and try to improve and get better. But the ideas have always come really easy for me. I just love that part of it. Do you attach to the characters? Do they become real to you? Yes. I know it seems like we're all a bunch of weirdos <laughs> authors, but <clears throat> they do. I get, I get very emotional about them. This was a very bittersweet book to write just because in some sense it was a reunion because, you know, some characters die in the original trilogy, but this is a prequel, so they're all alive. And so it was fun to be writing them again and, and be, you know, just see them right there on the page. But then also be, knowing this was the last book and knowing what was ahead of them. It was actually kind of a weird, emotional, lots of mood swings. and It was, it was fun, but probably my most challenging book that I've written. Congrats, man. All right, everybody check out The Fever Code, James Dashner. Congrats, man, on all the success. Anytime I see this type of stuff, it reminds me of how unbrilliant I am. Because <laughs> I just sit and I'm like, how do people think this? I, I remember seeing the Maze Runner movie for the first time. And, you know, listen, I'm 38 years old. I don't know anything about these worlds. So when Hunger <laughs> Games hit, I was like, what is this Hunger Games? And meanwhile, I watched every movie from the series. I was like, yeah. when's the next Hunger Games coming out? Yeah. So it's like crazy to me how people like you can come up with these just unique worlds all to well, themselves. Thank you. And thank keep you. popping them out. So congrats, man. I appreciate that a lot.